Broadland announced that they would be planning to electrify their line from Tampa to Coco. Anyways, this will be done in conjunction with the opening of the Tampa extension and the double tracking of the New Orlando line. You may have noticed that I only said Tampa to Coco. This is because the rest of it will remain unelectrified, as Broadline failed to reach any agreements with the Florida East Coast Railroad. Additionally, trains will switch from diesel to electric and vice versa on the move in Coco until the new stop at Coco is constructed. That's right, a new stop at Coco will be constructed. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust! The station will most likely use a single island platform with a pedestrian bridge to go over the Florida East Coast Railroad trackage. But I don't know, that's just my prediction. Now you may be wondering, what is Broadland's rolling stock going to look like? Broadland announced that they will be ordering 20 Siemens Venture APVs. APV stands for Auxiliary Power Vehicle. These rail cars will look exactly like Broadland's current Siemens Venture cars, except that these come with a pantograph on top and two powered trucks. Broadland's APVs will operate at 20 25 kilovolts AC. The pantograph will feed four traction motors in the car, with the DC link cable leading to the two locomotives. This means that under the electric territory, the diesel locomotives will be running on complete electricity. Those of you who are familiar with the Amtrak Aero know that this is the same technology that Amtrak is going to be using on the Northeast Corridor. The added APV will bring Brightline's Constance to eight cars, so the Constance will look like this. The four original Siemens Venture cars, three in Smart Class and one in Premium, the three new Venture cars that will be added to the Constance once the Orlando line is up and running for a while, two in Smart Class, one in Premium, and then the added APV. Brian hasn't announced the configuration for the APV, but my guess is that it's going to be another Smart Class. Of course, with the APVs, the Siemens Charger locomotives will have to be upgraded, but I'm sure they'll just use whatever technology the Amtrak Arrows are using. Poser says, bro, if your mic was better, I guarantee your channel would blow up. That reminds me, bro, if you subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com slash banksrow, I guarantee you I can afford a better mic. <clears throat> okay, Brian also shared the project design for the Tampa to Orlando section. As you see here, the train will go down the median of the I-4, with 11 foot tall catenary running on each track. Each catenary pole is approximately 18 inches thick, with signal equipment running at the base of the catenary. Just like on the Orlando extension, 12 inches of sub ballast and 14 inches of ballast will be laid down before the tracks are constructed. The route will also be using concrete ties. The green dotted line is where the existing grid is, while the solid line is where the new grid will be. All in all, the width of the entire right of way that Brian will be using is 22 feet. As we all know, Florida drivers are notoriously terrible. We begin tonight with frightening video of this very close call. A bright line train crushing a car this afternoon in North Miami. Spectators watching in disbelief as the SUV stopped on the tracks and the family inside quickly making their way out. Notoriously terrible at driving. Notoriously terrible at driving was what I was going to say. So Brian decided to go with 12 foot fences and walls along the right of way. The shoulder of the interstate will also be extended by two feet. This way there's no possible way, right? No possible way we're going to see any Florida drivers on the right of way. No possible way they're going to make it onto the train tracks. Right, Florida? For nearly 20 seconds, it was a wrestling match between man and gator. Richard, with what appears to be a cigar in his mouth the entire time. Right. Where even was I? Oh, yeah. 12 foot walls. Water will run off from the 0.05% grade into the drainage slots that are casted into the wall. Unfortunately, the maximum speed of Brightline won't be increased, but at least the acceleration for the trains will be faster. As always, if I earned your like and subscription, I love you. And if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Metro Mainline says, I like the editing style. Anton says, just found your channel and I love your editing style and you actually have some good knowledge about trains.